Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Hello, viewers. Welcome to today's devotional, the Daily Fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today, Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. The topic, Disappointing the King. Esther chapter 1, 1 to 12. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to come before you. Lord, we ask that you appear to us. For your word says you appeared unto Samuel in Shiloh by your word. Lord, I pray that every hearer of your word this day will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak, Holy Spirit, for your children listen. Thank you, faithful God, for in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Esther chapter 1, 1 to 12. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia. Over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. That in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all the princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the princesses being before him, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and four score days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court, of the garden of the king's palace, where there were white, green, and blue hangings, fasting with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compare, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to the king Azarus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bista, Habona, Bigtha, and Ab Abakta, Zetha, and Kakas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But upon Vashti, upon the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned him. The topic disappointing the king. We have here King Ahasuerus, who was the king of this empire, who decided to showcase his queen Vashti. This man had all it takes and his decision to showcase his one and only beloved queen Queen Vashti was so important to him that he had a lot of people coming. 
He invited people, they were there. The Bible says when his heart was merry, he commanded them to bring the wife, to bring the queen, so that the world can see. But the wife refused, the queen refused and said, I was not going to honor this special invitation. Looking at it as children of God, actually, this is the earthly king, Ahasuerus. And we have the king of kings who is our God, who sits on the throne and invites you and I. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Our father's invitation or our king's invitation is very special because he has brought us to showcase us. The invitation is our own good. Just like Ahasuerus invited Queen Vashti to showcase her, to showcase her beauty. The Bible says, for she was fair to look upon. The man was so delighted so that the world might see, people will see the kind of wife he had. But the woman refused. Just as God also gives us invitation of salvation, just as also God at one point or the other, at you know, one time or the other, keeps inviting us, keeps calling us, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You will have rest for your soul. But man, like Vashti, has refused to answer the call. Remember, the, the word of God says, Whosoever comes to me, I will not cast away. The Lord who gives this invitation, the king who has called us to showcase us, to bring us to the limelight, has good things. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. God has a desire to give you an expected end, but will you come? Just like Queen Vashti, as I said, decided to neglect the invitation. Many of us out there have neglected the invitation of God. Some through dreams, some through prophecy, some through his word, through the inner ministration of the Holy Spirit. Many have said, we will not come. We will not respond. We will not answer this call. And God is not comfortable. Because he knows that whosoever comes, if you read John chapter 3, verse 16, the word of God says, For God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth will not uh, perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 said, For God did not send the son to condemn the world, but that the world might through him be saved. You see, you can see brothers and sisters, you can see viewers there, you can see my brothers, that God's intention or the king's intention in inviting us or asking us to be part of his agenda is to bless us, is to give us eternal life. No man can give it to you. Look at it from this standpoint. Who could decorate Esther? Sorry, who could decorate Vashti more than the husband, the king, who has many provinces around him? Who could do that if not the king? And the king said, come, please come, my beautiful wife. Let me showcase you. Let me tell, show the world who you are. And the woman said, no, I wasn't going to come. I'm using a local palace. I'm not going to come. Jesus is calling you. The Lord God is asking you, come. Because he said in John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be calm. If Vashti had responded to that call, I'm telling you honestly, the glory would have been something else. If you can come to God,
If you can come to Jesus as you are listening to this devotion on this morning, this day, sorry, as you are listening to this devotion this day, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will touch you. The Lord will make you something. He will make you become great. Your destiny can never come to pass if you neglect God. Without God, in John chapter 15, verse 5, say, without me, you can do nothing. Can I ask you this question? Can Vashti become anything without the husband, without the king? The answer is no. So you, listening to me, myself preaching, cannot become anything outside God. Can you respond to the call of God this day? As you are listening, as you see, if you disappoint God, if you, disapp if you fail God, you might think you are disappointing God, but you are disappointing yourself. For the endless expectation awaits the manifestation of the, of the sons of God. May you come to God. May you respond to the invitation. May you fail to disappoint God. Your generation will hear about you. Your life will be transformed. Your destiny will come, become what God has destined you to be. I ask you in the name of God to respond. Don't be vasty. Don't be vasty. I say it again. Don't be vasty who disappointed herself eventually. Who disappointed herself thinking she was disappointing the king. If you disappoint God, you have disappointed yourself. You have disappointed your generation. You have disappointed destiny. Who knows what Vashti would have become? Who knows a lot of people who were looking out there, looking at her as their role model. That singular act, that singular act of rebellion. Remember, rebellion is seen as a sin of witchcraft. That singular act disappointed or may have disillusioned her onlookers, those who were watching her, those who saw her as a role model. She disappointed them. If you neglect the call of God, the invitation of God of salvation, I tell you, you have disappointed a lot of people. You have disappointed your generation. God will not be happy. Look at that place again in verse 12. But the queen vastly refused to come to the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned him. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 11 says that God is angry with sinners. God is angry. May you fail to respond. May you fail to come to the knowledge of the truth. God will be angry. Who are you? Who am I? To stand the anger of the Lord. I beg of you this day because God wants to bless you. God wants to touch your life. He wants to showcase you. He wants the world to know what he has embedded in you. He wants the world to know what he has, the stuff you are made of. Please call. Don't neglect the calling of God. Don't run away from God. Because in you resides dominion. In you resides glory. In you resides greatness. Please, I beg of you, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, don't miss this golden opportunity. The Lord is calling. Do not harden your heart. Brother, sister, out there listening, even myself, the preacher, I should not harden my heart to the calling, to the invitation of God. Because when we carry the gospel, the Bible says it is the power of God unto salvation. Permit me to tell you this, that the scripture says, how beautiful upon the mountain at the feet of them that bring good tidings and publish peace unto Zion. May you respond to the invitation of God. May you do not disappoint. May you do not rebel against God and his word and his invitation. You'll be beautiful. The Bible says you'll be fearfully and wonderfully made. I beg of you once again, respond to the call of God. Shall we pray? A prayer today said, may I not be a disappointment to you, O God. 
in Jesus name. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, almighty and everlasting Father. We pray, we beg you, O oh God, help us never to disappoint you in business, in marriage, in everything we do from this day, that you will not be angry at us, O oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Timber Lockwood Preservative surpasses all preventive measures designed to permanently prevent the damage and quality reduction of wood and wood-based materials by termites, fungi, bacteria, and other boring insects. Use Timberlock Premium Wood Preservative to prevent, correct, and defend wood and wood materials against deformities caused by termites and other insects in the later days. Timberlock is designed to solve wood preservation challenges with a standard you can trust. Timberlock Wood Preservative kills termites instantly. Timberlock Wood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.